Okay, I plan on uh, doing some more of that Reddit, but the power's out, the helicopters are out, it's a little bit crazy out here right now, you'll probably be hearing the helicopters going by, I got my headlamp on, <laughs> I know all about headlamps, <laughs> my cat's all freaking out, okay, hold on, let me get situated here, Burr. She might when she hears that helicopter. Okay. What is this going on here? Okay, the last one I did was... Was it, um, oh yeah, they've been seen for years now. U UBC really should ban them and try to get their leases terminated on the fret on the frat village so they can build something better there yeah so yeah like cubicles so they can take a rest between classes that's kind of a cool idea really i once again renewing my calls to renovate frat village and beta house into affordable student housing yeah well how ubc already bought the old frat house land in 2003 and signed a 99 year lease for the current frat village from a third party wow there is literally no legal way they can take the frat village now. They can issue fines through their con conduct agreement, though. That's about it. Whoa, did you guys know that? Whoa. A 99-year lease. This is how... See, this is how crazy... This is how big the frat thing is. That... that and, and how much they don't want it taken away. So why is that? I mean, with this... Is it, so, is, is it almost like a mafia-type thing? I mean, that's how it kind of feels right now, because, because what is so, I mean, I guess maybe I just don't understand because I've never been, you know, big on like groups and stuff like that. I've never been that type of person, you know, I don't need to be in a group, you know, so I don't know. That's just, I don't know. It's mind boggling to me, especially when they go to their weight, like literally, my God, you guys, <laughs> I have like weeds. I've been outside and I have like weeds in my hair. I just took my hair out of the ponytail and it's like, oh my God, it's everywhere. But, um, I know, revolution. Same here, not just student housing, some cubicles that can, uh, that you can book to take a nap in or just get some rest for students to use between their classes as well as would be nice. Sometimes we just have long days with large gaps between classes and these can be a great way to get some rest. That is really a great idea. And they do that in um, in J Japan. They have those uh, these hotels that are just literally a capsule you just sleep in. If they're so weird looking. Same here, not just student housing. Yeah, I already wrote that. Deleted one year ago. I know professors would surf our subreddit from time to time. I wonder what their thoughts are. <laughs> That's fun. Frats. We make the sc frats. We make the scum of the earth. Need a co-op in crime? This is a place to be. For the low price of your dignity and forgetting your morals, we will train you to be the next crime lord. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. I'm going to have to screenshot that one use it for the thumbnail. That's nuts. Wow. Well, they know what they're talking about. Dang. That's uh, interesting. 
Plus, you get to re role play as the bad guys from Harry Potter. I'm so sorry you went through this. Thank you for speaking up. It's pretty fucked up, but the guy did sign up for it. Frats are awful, but nobody should be too surprised to hear that this that that is what it's like. Get rid of them. World would be a better place. Wow, there's a lot of people, man. They're just really. This is. I mean, it's good because I mean, I've not heard this kind of stuff. This is, and this is a year ago, you guys, and girls. I don't think there's any place for fraternities in this day and age. And certainly not at UBC, that claims to be a progressive and leading institution. This is very disturbing. People like this don't have a place or deserve higher education. I wonder why UBC has ignored this behavior for so long. Because they can, because because they're so powerful, because nobody gets nobody gets in trouble, and they got lawyers up to yin yang. If this happened seven years ago, most have graduated and probably have moved out. It might be difficult to investigate, but but no undoable. Best they can do is find out if they're if they are still doing this kind of shit nowadays. Of course they are. LOL. Nowadays, I experienced I I experienced virtually the same in the eighties. Has not changed one bit. In fact, it sounds way worse than I than what I experienced. But less drugs and alcohol and puking. Delta Chi. I got to die. Wow. See, you guys, this is crazy. It's just, like I said, you know, like you got OnlyFans on steroids. This is fraternities on steroids and sororities on steroids. They've just thought up more and more over the years and become more aggressive because they don't get punished. Nothing happens. And so you just think about that. I mean, it's like, it's like, I'm trying to think of a scenario that, um, where like, um, like animals or like plants or something like that just keep grow getting more powerful and stronger with whatever I'm trying to think of a oh, I can't think of one right now I'm I've been working hard all day so I've been very very busy I've been shampooing rugs all day long Whew, I'm tired I agree I've been saying for quite some time that now that the frats in their current form have no place in modern society with their abusive and cult-like rituals and elitism. Wow, these people are letting them have it. You can always start a petition or grassroots student movement to demand their abol uh, uh, abolition if you want. I would gladly join you and support a movement. So would I. Ignored or encouraged? Exactly. Let's not be too quick to forget that our former president was a huge fanboy for the fraternities. And that's, you know, it, you, you have to think about that. Ignored or encouraged. Encouraged. Look at the cops. Look at look at the um, things that, you know, when they went up to the frat houses and they bopped their, you know, fist bumps. Keep it down. Keep it low. You know, don't get a ticket. Save it for beer. Party on, Garth. I mean, dude, where's my car? You know, it's like, seriously, these guys, they... It is. It's like they're encouraging it. <sighs> Fraternities certainly have a place. It's the archaic, it's the archaic, archaic hazing and crime that don't. Act, yeah, that's a good point. Actually, I think I, I agree with that. If they could do it, but I don't think they could do it because it's got it's it's so. Well, they can't all be like that, right? They can't all be like that. I mean, I've heard of ones that aren't at all like that and they definitely and well but then again are they lying <sighs> i don't know i mean the other frats that do uh, that are doing that kind of stuff do lie they are lying <sighs> claims to be that's why they have ignored the issue and will continue till the end of time yep i don't think there's any place for attorneys in this day and age and certainly not okay all right already read that part I personally just I personally disagree. The only place that really flunked, in my opinion, was Sigma Chi headquarters, since they should have launched an investigation and removed their chapter. As Sigma Chi has a brutally strict no hazing policy, and I have yet to hear a pledge story like this. Yeah, how about that? They do like you got like it's some of the things that I've read. You know, like from the from the book, um, the ritual book. It the way that they worded in there. It, it just, I mean, if it wasn't so scary, it made, it would make me laugh because it's like they actually, 
are doing everything that they're wording in parentheses not to do. Like if it's just absolutely something you do not do. It's almost like they're telling him what they can do in these parentheses in this ritual book. It's, it's bizarre. Like they're hinting to them. Okay, you're not supposed to do this, but this is what you do, you know? <sighs> Pretty sure these tactics were banned in the Geneva Convention. <laughs> what, what was the exit process like? I've heard that sometimes they sometimes make you sign. Oh, yeah, I'm glad you asked this. That they sometimes make you sign a contract where you literally have to pay to leave. How can they force you to pay, though? Just stop going to their house and try to avoid their members. Just nope out of here. Just nope out of here. They can't catch you and force you to pay if you just vanish from their sight. <clears throat> Not true at all, LOL. I was just on their website thinking of joining this year. What the fuck? For your information, I'm an international... I'm and international, so I don't know much about frat culture. Oh, if you're an international dude, do not do it. I saw their website and it's advertising and it and it's advertising of morality, in which I found it to be interesting. Hearing it now, mm, it's a no for me. Good for you, dude. Go meet them and formulate your own opinion. Strangers on the internet don't always know what they're talking about. Go meet them. Oh, come on. These guys are gonna be, these guys are gonna be as great as they can be to get you into their chapter. That's what that's what that's what Rush is all about. Talking, you know, seeing what you like. Basically what what here's how I feel about like um, the Rush, where they all go to a bunch of whole bunch of different houses, right, and they talk to them and they're asking them what you know, what you like and da 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 da. That is what narcissists do to reel you in. That's called the honeymoon stage. And what they do, and they they mirror you is what they do. So that's how they suck you in, is they like everything you like. They, you know, they feel what you feel. They want, you know, the same movies they like. I mean, the same events, the same type of sports, everything. And that's how they suck you in. And then as soon as you're in, poo, they don't like any of that stuff. It's It's really horrible. And that's what, you know, with those, the, those, uh, those rushes, that's how it feels like, that, that's what it feels like it is to me. I mean, when I've, when I've seen it on TV and, and through the videos and stuff, I can't believe this is going on while many other, when many other good students are studying their ass off a few hundred meters away. So true. What the fuck? This screams racism and sexual assault. These lovers need, need to be expelled. Yeah. Not just expelled. The victims should have gone to the police, but they were likely too scared because these people had power over them and their living arrangements, their lives. These people should have had jail time. Hallelujah. That's supposed to say, that's supposed to say losers. I cannot believe the power is still off. This is wild. Wow. Honestly, I don't get why frats are still a thing. They're all... They're also super American, but we do not have the same university culture here, nor do we need it. Yeah, right? I would report all these people because that behavior is extremely concerning and unacceptable as adults. Uh, exactly. Adults. I mean, yeah. But where are the, even the adults aren't adults. <laughs> Seriously. I would report all these people because the behavior is extremely concerning and unacceptable as adults, and it and it will escalate in various ways in their personal lives over time. Do you really care to protect a bunch of violent, racist homophobes? Yeah. Is there a campus overs oversight committee for frats? Hallelujah. Yeah, exactly. That's just nuts. It's so overblown. UBC fraternities can never get away with this. It's 2023, and this was all, and this was all true shit, and if, and if this was all true shit, if this was all true, shit would be exposed. No, no, dude. If this happened in the 80s, 90s, or maybe, the, or the 2000s, it could maybe see it, I could maybe see it being realistic. This person doesn't know what they're talking about. Social media has forced fraternities to tone down significantly. No, what it's what it's caused fraternities to do is is hide it more, is do it under under the cloak of darkness. I mean, literally, they it's they're sneakier about it, and it's I think it's probably more intense that way. 
social media has forced them to, uh, especially uh, so, um, socialist university like UBC, speaking from experience, if this was true, I'd be, I'd be reported and folks would be exposed, exposed, charged. He'd be reported. So what did he do? Is that what that means? Oh, it'd be reported. Okay. Simbakai would be nothing. The post on Reddit means nothing until you speak with authorities. It's nothing. The authorities don't do anything. Likely a member that had a tough time, maybe some red, yellow flags from the act from the actives, and has blown this out of proportion in spite. Oh boy, this person has no idea what they're talking about. No caps, all caps, exactly. For real, shit like this, be, being forced to eat rotten meat could be so many could put so many people in danger. It serves literally no purpose for a chapter to do that except incur liabilities. Stuff like morning runs and ritual-based shit might sound unappealing, but it's not dangerous. Plus, well, it's not dangerous until you have them run on a freaking bridge that they're not supposed to be on. Like, um, what is his name? Um, the kid that just happened to not, to, or actually it was several years ago. And he was, his, like, he was, um, like, well-liked. He was a senior, I think, too, if I'm not mistaken. Junior or a senior. And they did this to him. And the, and you know why they did it to him? They made him... Okay, so there's... It's called The Run. I think it's called The Run is what it, what it is. And they're not supposed to do it. It's in the books. They're not supposed to do it. It's illegal. And what The Run is, is that there's this big, huge bridge. And it's... This bridge is crazy how far it goes. And it's got two lanes going one way and two lanes the other way. And then there's a, there's a um, split in the middle. And the split is like, I think it's 12 feet wide. 8 to 12 feet wide, I think it is. Anyway, they make them, them, they go on this run. And then what they do is they make them jump off the bridge and swim to shore. Well, the guy never came up. He, he, he never, he died. And, um, and they lied about it. Like, they even called 911 to ask if maybe someone had been arrested or brought in for some reason or whatever. Or just brought in is what the guy said on the on the 911 call. And the lady on the, uh, that picked up, she was, she's like, well, is he in trouble? Or do, he's like, no, he would never do something. Like, no, never be in trouble. He's a great guy. I mean, <laughs> but yet they do this to the great guy. And you want to know why they did it to him? Because he was supposed to bring the McDonald's for everybody that morning. And he couldn't. And he didn't. And that's why. That's why he's gone. That's why he's dead. He didn't bring McDonald's for everybody. <sighs> that hurts. That is, in, that is unbelievable. And still to this day... And it's been years. I think it's been like seven years, I think. And they don't, they're not talking. They're not talking. It's nuts. For real, people are shit like being forced to eat rotten meat could put so many people in danger. It serves literally no purpose for a chapter to do that except incur liabilities. Stuff like morning runs and rituals, yep. Ritual-based shit might sound unappealing, but it's not dangerous. Plus, from my experience interacting with all but two chapters at UBC, it's that kind of stuff that frats do. Not shit like siphon gas and eat rotten meat. Oh, man. OP was probably a pledge who got dropped for being creepy and decided to make this all an act of, pretty, of petty vengeance. Oh, bolt God. Is this that same person? Oh, no, it's Jon Snow from... Where's Jon Snow from? From a... Uh, what's that? Um, the Dragon Show. What's that called? <laughs> I'm not good with that stuff. Oh, my gosh. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, well. You guys know what I'm talking about, I'm sure. I know directly... I know directly of one guy who got dropped from pledging and claimed the guy spiked the beer with LSD. Which is wild as shit, because, one... A bunch of guys were drinking the same beer from the same pitcher, and if that was the case, they'd all be walking liabilities. I don't think that's even possible. Two, I don't think that's even possible. Oh, sure it is. 
you are so very wrong. Sigma, Sigma, <laughs> Chi, and other fraternities let like them have infiltrated every nook and cranny of institutions of power that makes impo it impossible to have truthful reports that remove their carefully crafted false selves and deceitful in intentions and threaten to expose their criminal actions against others they harm for pleasure. No lie. Wow. There's there's some really crazy ones in here that people like they're posting that they're that are just are just denying the fact. I mean they're just they're blind and they're blind. And then there's people like this that are like, wow, they exactly know what's talk going on. <sighs> I think this post is fraternity fanfic. <laughs> But please read all things with a critical, suspicious eye. I could be lying to you. OP, are you sure that was at UBC and at SIG? I don't know where to start with this. This post is hilarious and so, and so all over the place. I happened to be in SIG at UBC seven years ago. And let me tell you, I would have left immediately if they were even hinting at putting a raw egg vibrator in my mouth. This all reads like Greek rank fanfic but maybe i'm wrong and a liar so dear reader please be suspicious please be critical of me hmm. also side note i find this post post actually counterproductive to further to furthering the actual improvements that are needed in the greek system namely providing an environment open frat parties would be the worst one ex the be the worst one example that seems to foster a probably foster a probably increased number of reported cases of, of sexual assault misconduct against women as compared to a normal party with people that you know or a bar <laughs> i also didn't love some of the inherent misogamy that was that was present in the greek system we had houses sororities don't is one among others see right there you guys that's what i told you they had houses sororities don't none of those in fact any of those those houses that say they're sorority houses are really it's so weird the way they put this. I've read I don't I'd have to get to find the article again, but but they're they're actually frat houses. It's so weird. Um, they even call like they don't even call sororities sororities. They call them fraternities. They're it's a fraternal order. They really don't have their own voice. They may seem like they do when it's down like this, but they really don't. It's weird. It's so male-based, it's just... It's like... It's like, when are they going to, like... I don't know, grow up? Realize that, you know, this world needs both male and female to exist. And quite frankly... In my opinion, females are so much stronger. Maybe not muscle-wise lifting stuff, but everything else. I mean, can you imagine a guy having a period once a month? Can you imagine what that would be like? Oh, God, I don't even want to. And how about having a baby? How about having to be the one responsible for taking the birth control every month so you didn't, so it didn't happen? How about having to cook dinner every night? Change kids' diapers. And I know I know some dads do it. I know some guys do it. I'm not saying all guys. But on the, on the majority, we're talking like the women do this, not the guys. So if it was flipped around, there's no. <laughs> no. You know, yeah, how about picking the kid up from school when there's like a something... A movie on or a, or a or a sport sporting event and he's in the middle of it and he's got to pick up the kids um, she think yeah he won't bitch about it you women do this have to they just do it we just do it because that's what we have to do it's part of it's part of living you know and i'm not like i said i'm not putting all guys down i'm not saying this is all guys but a majority come on If you want to take, if you want my take on those things, please comment. Also, if I were you, I'd really want to fuck up a fraternity's reputation. I would be, I would have taken the essay angle, but you didn't, which is interesting. 
It makes me think you're in another fraternity. But then again, apparently, I'm a white frat boy who puts raw egg on a vibrator in my mouth. So whoever's reading this, um, don't trust what I say. God, who is this person? To begin, unfortunately, it seems it takes a second to tell a lie and a minute to undo one. Whew, this is some word salad. Who is this person? It, this person is like, ugh. It's hard to read this, this particular comment, too. It's weird. It makes posts like these tough. It makes rumors tough. It made Donald Trump president. <laughs> but let's try anyway, despite the incoming downvotes, and break OP's post down line by line. I'm also not going to play the why didn't you quit right away game. But like, dude, if this was really why you didn't, you didn't, why you, didn't you quit? Wait. But dude, if this was real, why didn't you quit? This post is fucked up if it was a real life. See, and this is, I mean, as this person says they were in a fraternity, but, and I know they're not all the same, but, I mean, there's documented cases of what happens when they quit. It's not as easy as it's, as it, these, this guy's making it out to be. First off, if I started as a pledge, they made me do tons of boring miscellaneous tasks all day, like clean their rooms and bathrooms, clean the kitchen, nothing terrible. No, this is terrible. And if I was made to do this, or anyone in my pledge class was made to do this, I would have quit. We were asked to come over and help clean up the main parts of the house after parties alongside active bros. We usually wanted, wanted to, though, because we wanted active bros to like us. I think beta forces people to clean, but they tend to tend to trend in the more meathead direction, at least at this time, at least at that time. I don't know if it works for them. I think their brotherhood suffer, suffers for it anyway. Two, if we didn't clean fast enough, they would yell and scream at you, call you homophobic and racial slurs. A lot of times the members said the N-word and made you pl plank, squat, or do some form of exercise. Well, we like... We like five black dudes and sig at that time. We had we had like five black dudes and sig at that time. A couple of which were very prominent brothers and would have beat our asses if white boys or anyone else was was slinging n words. People did say the f word around the house sometimes, but we eventually stopped that when a guy when a gay when a guy when a guy gay joined when a gay guy joined. He got that spit. Usually. See, this is why these are hard to read. <laughs> They're not the easiest thing to read sometimes. <laughs> Sound like I'm like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and that's how it feels. <laughs> usually these guys do not say it anyway. Usually, usually the guys that did say it anyway were going for shock, humor, I think. I think, I don't know. Are you coming to sit on my lap? Again, though, he really did... We, we never did the cleaning thing, and I would have never joined if, if this happened. Three, a lot of times they would make us steal stuff too. Some of this did happen, but not in the way you describe. Fraternities like, like to steal from each other. It's kind of all in the game. Nobody's for, nobody forced us. So that, I was going to put that in the last video when I heard about the stealing thing, because there is um, one of the Pullman police videos um, the Pullman Hill ones, uh, one of the cops catches the guy, a guy taking a barbecue off of this person's front porch and he just tells him to go put it back. He's like, no, you don't want to do that, do you? What are you doing? And he has to go put it back. But he never got in trouble. He just, and he just walks off with this, this person's barbecue from their front porch. I mean, that's just scary in itself. I don't know. They forced me to steal furniture from people's balconies for the house. Food from the food bank bins and a lot of times just snacks they wanted for shoppers, both locations. If you refused to do it, they would threaten to beat you up. Or in my case, I was placed in a dark room for eight hours with white noise playing in the background. Fraternities usually get furniture for free. That's why fraternity houses look like shit, among many, other, among many, many other reasons. I did know a guy who stole a bench when he, when he got hammered. He did this unprompted, all on his own. He had many issues. Also, at the time, we had bros who literally ran the arms, the the AMS food bank, and volunteered there. I don't know. I like this. I don't know. I think this, your post seems made up, but maybe not. 
<laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Maybe it happened under my nose. Dear reader, keep a suspicious lens on me. Also, dark room with white noise sounds peaceful. <laughs> oh, we need to get this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and get an extra long version of, of the vintage Sigma Chi chant. I think if we would have wanted to torture you, we would have blasted shitty music. <laughs> like K6 do. It is shitty music. It's not even music. <laughs> oh, this this was all to gain their validation before initiation happened. Yes, pledges do, pledges do like validation. Good pledge. But one of the worst things they made us one of the pledges do was to siphon gasoline out of people's cars. Once they stole gasoline from a minivan, and I and I later found out that it was a mother with with kids, a mother with with kids' car. She couldn't start it and took take them to school. One of the activists was mad. She was trying to investigate and slashed her tires the next day. Are you trying to tell me a pledge was so good at siphoning gas that uh, that he got all the gas out of the car so that the car wouldn't even start? Pretty sure that's difficult to do, but I'm not a mechanic. Maybe that happened, but even on empty, you can start a car. No, well, I guess sometimes you can't. Well, it depends on the it depends on it if it's a uh, what's it called? Um, I no, it's dark out here. It's kind of freaking me out all of a sudden because my cat's like looking out like something that's outside. Okay, this is weird. Okay, I'm going to pause for a minute. Okay, I'm back. I just checked the Facebook for the um, for this power outage. And uh, they can't seem to find it where the brake is, which is really weird. Um, there was literally one big, huge, loud bang. You know how the boom, how like a transformer sounds when it blows up? Like, it sounds like, like a like a huge firework, right? The big ones that blow up mailboxes and stuff. What, M80, M100, M things like that. But the second one, right after that, I've never heard one that loud. And it rattled the house. Rattled it. It's crazy. And I can't believe they can't find the brake. Someone did comment that they had a really low power line like on their, laying on their house. And then up the street, when we first went out to investigate, one of the girls said that there's some wires down her place that were frayed, and I was like, oh, kind of crazy. Wow. Anyway, okay. All right, where was I at? Oh, pretty sure that's difficult to do, but I'm not a mechanic. Maybe that happened, but even on empty, you can start a car. I would encourage people to research this, or maybe someone knows more about cars could, who knows more about cars could chime in. Also, how do you guys get the full story of what happened after the siphoning? Did she see the person who did it and know who they were? Did you guys camp out to see if she could start her car in the morning? Please give me more details. I'm interested. Also, the slashing tires thing is pretty wild. I don't know. Poof, they haven't been to Moscow, have they? <laughs> boy, boy. I mean, they're, they were on a roll. I'm telling you, there were some uh, there were so many tires slashed, it was crazy. Okay, here is a report for the person that doesn't think that tire slashings happen. Booyah! Moscow police receives 20 reports of residents' tires slashed overnight. And mind you, this is just one night. This happened over a period of a week, about, about a week. So the Moscow Police Department received 20 reports of residents' tires being slashed in the neighborhoods around Maybell, uh, Spotswood, Hayes, Adams, and 8th, 8th Streets. The map below shows a general area where the tires, where the tire slashings occurred. Oh, there you've got Troy Road, which is always a mess. Because there's the cop shop there, so... Spotswood right there. The Abbey. 
Animal Clinic, Rolling, Hill, Rolling Hills Roofing, Holly Glenda, Northwest Mobile Blasting. I wonder if anything has to do with the like the names of the businesses. <clears throat> Ma Bell and Eight. Hmm. The police department is asking residents in that area to check their security cameras if they have any. If you see anything suspicious while reviewing your footage from the night of November 22nd, please contact law enforcement. The tires were reported to be slashed around 10 p.m. yesterday. If your tires were damaged or if you have any more information, please contact the Moscow Police Department. Well, here's the thing. They can contact them all they want and tell them, show them the footage and everything. But if they're fraternity guys, which I bet you they are, in my opinion, pure speculation, they are not going to do nothing about it. Period. That's all there is to it. Sad but true. It was actually on the Moscow PD, um, their Facebook page. That's how big, I mean, it was like two or three days. And it was just, I mean, one guy had four vehicles that had the tire slash. And two of them were dually pickups. Can you imagine all the tires slashing one of those? That is a lot of money. <laughs> and not only that, not only were the tires slash, but they were breaking the, the side mirrors off of them too. And in some cases, a couple of them were um, rattle can uh, spray painted. Yeah, how nice is that? <sighs> also, the slashing thing, tires thing is pretty wild. I don't know. This all seems funny, but maybe I'm wrong. You are wrong, dude. I was demoralized and ashamed, but stayed with the pledge process because likely, because luckily I avoided some of the worst stuff, although I'm not proud of the things I did. What were your reasons for staying? I would be interested to know your thought process at the time. Eight. I liked a lot of the guys in Sigma, honestly, but they developed this weird gang mentality when they were together. Oh, this is common with frat boys. I agree. I find it pretty lame from an outside perspective. You just get caught up in the hype though <sighs> nine some of the nicest guys I know would be saying the n-word and saying terrible things about people of African descent I'm a half Filipino half Lebanese and they would call me monkey sand monkey sand bl n and mud blood all the time they gave us all nicknames and guys who I thought were my friends would call me racial slurs and psychologically abuse me Yes to nicknames. Yes to inappropriate nicknames. Yes to most people liking nick. Yes to most people liking nicknames, but not always everyone liking the nicknames. <laughs> but LOL again with the race thing. Refer to point to point two. We weren't tossing n words around. We were also pretty diverse at the time as far as fraternities go. The Black Dudes and Sigma called themselves n. Oh, oh, Nigma. Enigma Kai? Is that what there's? Oh, that's, oh, yeah, okay. Also, the amount of dollar signs we put, you put in sand, blank, blank, suggest you weren't using a hard R. Oh, my God, who is this person? <sighs> so, if you believe OP, please take note of this, please. This is also ridiculous and plays into people's preconceived idea of what fraternities are like. Fraternities in Canada are also much more tame than in the states i would have joined in the states i would i wouldn't have joined in the states well there you go now you're telling us also you think we use references from harry potter to insult each other not the vibe i guess we are the we are the slithering i guess we are the slithering of ubc so i get it i don't know this guy's kind of weird 10 the worst was initiation, which was extremely traumatic, and I don't want to go into much detail about it. They blindfolded us and made us stand naked against a wall. They would pour cold liquid on our, on our heads and laugh and say demoralizing and racist things. No. Go into detail. Tell me more. Why we did not do the naked thing or cold liquids...
again, with the racism, don't ever refer to, don't even refer to point two at this time. I'm not going to keep commenting on this. I'll just say that we were pretty diverse. We had a multiple, we had multiple Muslim guys. I'm not trying to play the, my friend is black, so I'm no racist thing. But like, we had a lot of problems and like, and just, God, this guy. But we, but like, okay, but like, we had a lot of problems. Jeez, how do you read these things? And I just, maybe I'm just a little discombobbled because it's so dark out here right now and there's no power. Could that, that could be. But like, we had a lot of problems and I just don't think racism, racism was one of them. We, you're not in Idaho either. But we're still pretty white, though. Don't get me wrong. I'm not Pi Delta the level of white. I'm not Pi Delta level of white. <laughs> God. Wow. Eleven. Then they would tie our hands to the chair and ask us trivial historical questions about the fraternity. We would ask historical history questions. No hand tying, though. By the way, trivia doesn't mean mean what you think it means. Trivial doesn't mean what you think it means. Psh. Purple Network. Twelve. Every time I got one wrong, they would waterboard me and scream at me until I got them right. No, we did not use torture tactics. Banned by Geneva Convention. Come on, dude. Is this per is this whole person Purple Network? Let me look up here. Yeah, it is. Hmm. Thirteen. Then they took us into rooms alone and made us watch homophobic pornography with a sound full blast. One of the pledges, let's say, got aroused during it, so they physically assaulted him really bad with a wooden oar. All right. I would love for you to give more me more details on this. This is so insane. What was said before they turned on the gay porn? Are you telling me they were conducting boner checks to see if boys were getting turned on? Then if the active boys concluded there was a boner, they would beat them up for having a boner? Ah, I just can't express how backwards this is. This is, And even if we were trying to haze on a ridiculous level, active bros would have found this so gay. There is some latent homophobia that gets tossed around between straight dudes in a team environment. I'll give you that. But making a deliberate plan to be this gay is so ridiculous. We have to plan initiate. We have to plan initiation ritual. You think we sat down and said, "You guys, we need to decide which gay porn we should we show to the pledges." I'm thinking, "Bear on Twink," <laughs> but we did that last year. I don't know. I know I'm being silly here, and maybe I'm being offensive. But this one is so funny. Also, the or thing. No, we didn't paddle anyone. We have to understand that if you treat people too shitty, they don't want to hang out with you. And we'll leave your organization if you beat them on the on the butt cheeks. It's why Brad Pitt doesn't doesn't rep Sig because he got hay super hard, I think. You know, they do hit with those paddles. And I have seen those videos. There's some there's this one video that, that just oh just makes me cringe. It's um, a very, very heavy dude. And it they're hitting him with this paddle and it's his backside to, to us. We're, that's what we're visualizing, seeing. And he has a um, very long scar on his back. Like he had back surgery or something. I mean, it had, it had to have been something like that. And they were literally hitting him so hard on the back and that scar... Uh, I guess he had um, severe damage from it, like like walking or something. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I mean, it's it's a it's a scar. It's a scar. There's a reason why that scar is there. Then this is my point with this things like this too. Is that these fraternity guys don't know what underlying conditions any of these guys have. I mean, it could be anything. I mean, it could just be a, a heart murmur, anything like that. It could be, you know, whatever surgery they've had, if they've got a pin in, you know, if they've, if they've got weak bones. I mean, you never know. 
And for them to like just go, you know, and do this, well, just like with people that are maybe on antidepressants and they just and they force them to drink. If you're on antidepressants and they're doing that, that is bad news. Bad news. That's how Lucas Taylor that's how Lucas um um Tyler passed. And I really think his was due to hazing. He was definitely depressed. From what I understand, he was writing letters um, or two other um, guys that he trusted. And those guys actually went forward to his parents and told them what he was experiencing through the um, with the hazing. And he was having a really tough time with it. So, I don't know. It's real sad. So sad. They spanked him with it and he couldn't walk. He was on the ground crying and in severe pain and they just left him there. Then they took us into the main room, usually where the parties happen and where people dance, and they made us lie on the floor completely naked. They forced us to crawl and eat old molding pieces of meat off the ground with our hands behind our backs. They called it the Pig Festival. And then all the active bros clapped. This part is is all such dramatic writing, though, and it reads like a R slash that happened story. So... This is also right up there with fucking the goat rumor that gets thrown at various fraternities. <sighs> All right, you guys. With that goat thing, I used to bar in this town when I started this new bartend job. One of the guys who was who I had actually bartended with um, before in a different town, and we were both we were both lead bartenders. So I mean, that was he was actually managing the, this particular place that I just started at, though. Um, which was weird working underneath him because I never had to do that before and it sucked. But he was being, um, I don't know what they call it in, um, I don't know what they call it when they, uh, when you're trying to get into the Masonic, the maze. Anyway, he was, he was doing that. He was, and I, and I, and I really didn't even know what it was, what it was. I don't know. I still really don't get that whole thing, you know, with the Masonic stuff. I just don't get it. But he was actually telling me about the goat. That that this is what they had that what they were going to have to do. And I was like, are you kidding me? Why would you even do this? <sighs> yeah, so I don't know, the goat thing I've what I'm what I've heard and I've not it's not the first person I've heard it from either. So that's just gross. I don't know why anybody would want to be in an organization where they had to do that kind of stuff in the first place. He was kind of weird, though. <laughs> he was really weird, actually. Um, he was very strange. His name was Dave. He was very strange. Okay. Then all the active guys. Okay. Let's see. The room that um, gets thrown at various fraternities. Now, now, don't get me wrong. I personally do believe that Dex do F goats. This is my own belief that I am entitled to. No, I do not have evidence, but it's just a strong feeling I have and keep it close to my heart. What is that about? I do believe that Dex do. Is that Dex? What does he mean by that? Dex, is that Delta? I'm going to have to look that up. But actually, they better power, better turn back on pretty soon. I've got nothing enough power on my phone. I'm going to be mad. 15. The people who ate the most was then exempt from the punishment. Do you know what the punishment was? They covered a vibrator with raw egg and made us put it, made us put it in our mouths. Not all of us had to do it, but a couple guys did. And when the actives got a good laugh, we moved on to just hours of intense physical activities. This is my favorite thing you wrote from for some reason. Why the egg? It's such a funny thing to pick. I don't get it. Well, if you don't get it, dude, <laughs> then you have never maybe ejaculated. Not really sure. Um, it's such a funny thing to pick. I don't get it. We we could have picked something way more gross, but we went with raw egg after the moldy meat. Sounds like a treat after moldy meat, though. <laughs> and why go into trouble? Why go get go to the trouble of getting vibrators when they could just when they're just going to go in our mouths. What? And why go to the trouble of getting vibrators if they're just going to go in our mouths? Oh my God. It would be cheaper to get dildos and, and spend 
the leftover sex toy money on booze and weed. Doesn't seem like good financial decision making here. I want to I want I want to know who planned this one. Anyway, this one is also so ridiculous. I hope you as much as much fin writing it oh had as much fun writing it as I did reading it. Again, I know I'm accusing OP of lying here. Please be critical of me. I, I could be lying too. This person is wild. Oh, and by the way, if they can spend tons of money on booze to get these, these um, pledges drunk, I mean, they spend a fortune on, on hard alcohol. The last and most messed up part of initiation is in the end. The ceremony that takes place is a chapter room is in the chapter room and very ritualistic. They are in these weird cloaks holding staffs and we go through this whole pseudo-Christian ritual that is for some reason dedicated to Greek gods and Freemasonry. Freemasonry, Masonic Brotherhood, if that even makes sense. Well, most wizard stuff, there may have been some cloak business, but no staffs. The rituals don't tend to be pseudo-Christian. They are very much Christian in a non-specific way. But everyone knows you don't have to believe in it if you don't want to. And you can just bullshit and say yes through some parts. Again, we had multiple Muslim guys. I'm sure most guys were atheists. Not really a big issue, though. And no Greek god talk ever comes up once in a ritual st once in ritual stuff or otherwise this is just simply wrong you could have gone you have could have done much better research to get dirt on fraternity teachings for example i think some of the founders of a lot of these fraternities were on the wrong side of confederacy in the us that could have been a good one i digress this person's all about themselves man I mean, like apparently they like listening to themselves, you know, talk, read, whatever. Sounds like a certain someone on on YouTube. I won't go into that one. I'll get in trouble.